morning. My name is Reverend Caroline Staden Menunzaga, and I'm the interim pastor here at Wyoming Presbyterian Church. I'd like to extend a very warm welcome to all of you watching at home on behalf of the entire congregation and to say to all of you a very happy Easter. This season of Lent has been an especially difficult one. It's been arduous at times. And yet we know that when, while the pain and the suffering of this pandemic will not end on this day, we still are people of resurrection and we are people of hope. And so amidst the storm, we cling to that promise that Jesus Christ is today and every day, our Lord and our Savior. Before we continue with worship, I'd like to share just a few announcements with all of you. The first is that we have a special Easter kids experience for our children and young families of our congregation. It's called Easter Jam. And if you haven't received information about it, please do reach out to Sabrina Legic and she can forward on all the login information. It's an interactive experience meant to brighten up the day of all the kids who are participating in our worship today. The second announcement I have is that folks generally during this time of year do give special Easter offerings in memory of or in honor of their loved ones. And while you're not sitting in your pews and you're not able to fill out the special Easter offering envelopes, you can still do so online. Just go to our website and when you fill out the form, you can make out in the memo line the special offering to your loved one. In advance, we thank you so much for your generosity during this time of year. Finally, I think it goes without saying that a lot of work goes into our Holy Week services. And this year, more so than years past, if you can believe that. The church is not a group of a bunch of individuals, but a community of people who believe and hope. And so I give thanks for this community this year who really rallied around uh, making and producing these services. My first shout out goes out to our soloists who agreed to give solos for this week, way before we knew that there would be a pandemic. And so in addition to sharing their gift of voice, they also put in a lot of time filming themselves and figuring out all of those logistics. So very, very special thank you goes out to John Reese, to Roberta Butler, and today's soloist, Victoria, Victoria Canenso. Thank you so much for sharing your gift of song. I'd also like to thank our special readers for Monday Thursday service who participated in the dramatic reading. Uh, Tony Rodriguez, Kirk Soar, and Scott Mayfield. Tony Rodriguez, I think, was especially very convincing as Jesus. So we thank you for those gifts, Tony. Next, I'd like to thank those who um, put a lot of time and effort into actually producing these videos and sharing them on social media. Thank you, Kirk Soar, for putting together the videos in such an artful way and making us look really good from our Made at Home videos. And thank you to Emily Kalbeck the genius behind all of our social media. And if you haven't already done so, follow us on Instagram and Facebook. And finally, it takes a village. And I really want to send out special words of thanks to our staff. We are so blessed with the staff we have. Everyone is so talented and dedicated. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Sandy Kramer, Steve Shellman and Sabrina Legic for all of the love that you put into making this week a success. And now friends, it's time to turn our hearts and minds to worship with our call to worship. And we're going to say those words that we say every year during Easter time in a call and a response. And let us proclaim it right now. The Lord is risen, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. Let us worship God. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
and behold, there was a great earthquake. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon him. His countenance was like lightning, and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the God in prayer. Let us pray. Glory to you, O God. You have won victory over death, raising Jesus from the grave and giving us eternal life. Glory to you, O Christ. For us and for our salvation, you overcame death and opened the gate to everlasting life. Glory to you, O Holy Spirit. You lead us into the truth. Glory to you, O blessed Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Let us continue with worship with our opening hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today.
friends, let us go to God in prayer as we pray for guidance as we read this scripture. Let us pray. Lord, often we fail to recognize you because our expectations blind us to your near presence. Open our eyes, silence our fears, help us to see you in the word read and proclaimed, and then empower us to go and tell others the good news. It's the name of our Redeemer, Jesus Christ, that we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Today's gospel reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 1 through 10. Listen now for the word of the Lord. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here for he has been raised as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and they ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, greetings. And they came to him, they took hold of his feet and they worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Friends, this is the word of the Lord for which we say thanks be to God. Well, friends, this year we have celebrated Holy Week in a way that we really haven't before. In the circumstances of a global pandemic, we have been able to look at the scriptures that are at the heart of our faith in a different way and through different eyes. We started out on Palm Sunday and we joined those followers of Jesus on the side of the road, not with pomp and circumstance, but with whatever we had, with branches from trees and with our cloaks. We raised our voices high saying, Hosanna, save us. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We continued on in Holy Week and we sat together in our respective dining rooms and we shared communion and we listened to Jesus' greatest commandment for us, to love one another the way that he first loved us. Later that night, we would see that he truly did love us to the end and that he was betrayed and he was arrested and on Good Friday, he was put on trial and crucified to death. There in his death, he showed the greatest love of all that he would give his life for ours. So this day on Sunday, Easter Sunday, the day of the resurrection, we also look at these scriptures with new eyes. How can we not? And I say that because normally when we come in on Easter Sunday, it's hard not to automatically feel jubilant. There are butterflies, there are flowers, there are beautiful outfits, great food, family gatherings, chocolate. There's nothing not to love about Easter. It's a time of celebration about the resurrection of the Lord. And yet it's hard to get centered in the fact that on the morning of Easter, it was a very somber time. It was a somber time because there was death all around. And so when Mary and Mary went out in that morning, grieving, feeling whatever they were feeling, perhaps we can, as we are sitting amidst very stressful times, times of fear, times of sickness, times of death, perhaps we can connect somewhat in that feeling of fear. Mary and Mary went out to the tomb. And the story that we tell is that an angel, a supernatural being, something celestial came down from the sky, 
and the impact of it was so great that it was like an earthquake. It shook the entire ground on which they stood. So much so that the guards who were there, who were guarding the tomb, froze up as if they were dead from so much fear. Mary and Mary were there and the angel looked at them and the angel said, do not be afraid, come and see. He's not in there, he's not in this tomb. And once you've seen that, that you've seen that he was raised just like he said he would be, go and tell the disciples that he has gone ahead of all of you to Galilee where he will reveal himself to you. And so they went out, they ran, they were ready to tell the disciples and they were full of both joy and fear. How could they not have been? And right there in the road, Jesus comes to them and he says to them, again, what we hear from the angel and what we hear from Genesis through Revelation, do not be afraid, do not be afraid. Go and tell the disciples what you have seen and that I will go ahead of them to Galilee where Jesus had begun his ministry. Now, some have said this year that perhaps we should put Easter on hold. That Easter, yes, the, the date is April 12th and we'll observe that day. But Easter is really gonna be when we can all gather together again physically, when we can celebrate together, when we can really have the trumpets and we can touch each other. But I would suggest to you that we are people of resurrection. That means that amidst the darkest night, we still cling on to the fact that the dawn is coming. That amidst death, we cling on to the fact that the resurrection is coming. That amidst the deepest despair, there is hope. Amidst the deepest fear, there is joy. And so friends today, I would suggest to you that though we're not in the church, that the church building is empty, we can still celebrate Jesus' resurrection today because that is at the center of our faith. If you go to the empty building today, Jesus won't be there. Jesus is with us wherever we are on that empty road. And today it's easier than ever to imagine that empty road. If your empty road is at home, Jesus is there. If your empty road is in a packed hospital, Jesus is there. If your empty road is in a psychiatric hospital, Jesus is there. If your empty road is in a prison, Jesus is there. If your empty road is a nursing home, Jesus is there. If your empty road is on the border, Jesus is there. Jesus is wherever we are, friends, meeting us on the road and telling us, do not be afraid. I am risen. I'm risen indeed. Jesus speaks truth into our darkest night and tells us, do not be afraid. And so friends, while Jesus is not in that empty tomb and Jesus is not in the empty building either, Jesus is on that empty road wherever you are. So I challenge all of you and I encourage all of you to hold on to that promise, to hold on to it as tight as possible, to hear those words, do not be afraid, and then go and tell what exactly it is you have seen and heard, that Jesus, Jesus Christ is risen today. He is risen indeed.
to God in prayer. Let us pray. God, our creator, our redeemer, and our sustainer, your promises are sure, your love is unrelenting, your power and your vulnerability are unmatched. We bow before you, humbled by your grace, awed by your mercy, and rejoicing in your kindness. We don't pretend to understand the mystery of resurrection, but we cannot help but recognize our risen Lord among us, present in our suffering, visible in new creation, made known to us in the breaking of the bread. Gracious Lord, we cannot meet you on the outskirts of the graveyard and not fall on our knees and worship. You suffered and died to forgive us. You became incarnate to show us God's love for us. You healed and you fed. You taught and preached. You prayed and ate with sinners to show us God's will for us. You went to the tomb and were raised from the dead to defeat evil and bring life eternal for the sake of the world. Hear our praise as we shout alleluia and tell all the earth of your glorious resurrection. God, you call each and every one of us by name. Hearing our weeping, you refuse to leave us alone in our grief. As we trust your compassion, we share our deepest hopes and our greatest fears. We lift up to you those who are crying in the night. We give thanks for those who have fallen ill and then recovered. We pray that you would comfort the many who mourn, families unable to hold funerals, doctors and nurses confronted constantly with death, people longing to touch those isolated by this pandemic. We remember your call to care for the least of these and ask that you would give us the wisdom to serve in the many ways that show your love for all people. Help us to be present with each other, though we can't be physically. May your spirit be among us as we send notes, as we make calls, as we visit on Zoom. Help us to feed those who hunger physically, spiritually, and emotionally. May your body, the church, be united in our caring, radical in our generosity, and in our commitment to advocacy. We lift in this space, especially those for whom we hold dearest in our hearts. We lift them up in this silence. God, on this day of resurrection, filled with fear and joy, we worship, we sing, we weep, we give thanks. And most of all, we marvel at your unwillingness to leave us to the consequences of our actions, your desire to be in relationship with us, and your amazing grace through which you have saved us. In response to that grace, we join our voices together and we pray the prayer our Redeemer, Lord Jesus Christ, taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
as you go out from this place, tell what you have seen and heard. Jesus Christ is risen today. He is risen indeed. And as you go out, receive this benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever. Amen. Thy name.